decks cover more space than 20 football fields, and she can carry almost 3,800 passengers on each cruise. The 1,000 crew members, all of whom spend most of their lives at sea, are pushing hard to maintain the crew in pace. It's very frustrating for me. We work here, but we leave here. This cruise will be the toughest yet, as the ship hosts her first rock concert at sea. Crazed fans, paparazzi, and a host of celebrities compete with unruly crew, politics, and passion for a week of epic chaos. This is the job. This is cruise ship life as never seen before. The next few weeks will test this floating city's metal and will reveal exactly what it's like to live and work on one of the ocean's true giants. This is Cruise Ship Diaries. The Costa Serena is due to dock in Venice this morning. But the day has not started out well. The ship was due in port 20 minutes ago. Winter seems to have begun early. There is a blanket of thick mist covering the city, the port, and the Judeca Canal. Captain Giuseppe Russo and his second officer, Christian Cotugno, have a challenge on their hands. It's almost impossible to see more than 25 meters in front of them. This means that they are forced to slow down to a near halt and carefully navigate their way to the port. The Judeca Canal is one of the world's busiest channels, spanning just 400 meters across. It's no simple navigation, even with perfect visibility. The canal was never designed to account for ships the size of the Serena. At this speed, the officers estimate that they will arrive in port over an hour late. This is not good news for guests waiting to disembark. Many of them may now miss their flights out of Venice. Edward, the director of services, and his assistant Rob had their hands full. We have the, the guests, you know, that are getting uh, pretty nervous, which is very easy to understand. They might have their travel arrangements, you know, they might be scared to miss their flights. It stresses us a little bit. I've heard about this infamous fog in wintertime in Venice. Foghorn blasting made my heart race a little bit. Blood pressure is climbing throughout the ship. The team is taking the strain. The officers on the bridge can't do anything more. They're forced to continue sailing as slowly as possible through the busy channel. The ship is already 40 minutes late. The delay will have a knock-on effect. Over a thousand German guests are boarding in Venice today, and they'll be waiting at the port right now, unimpressed. Germans, this is one thing that they would never forgive you, to be late. At least the officers on the bridge are making progress. They've entered the port. Docking such a huge ship takes some of the best nautical skills around, and this team have a reputation for being on top of their game. There are humans and there are maritime people. And I'm so happy that all the other officers from the fleet, they are so jealous of the team that we have here on board this ship. Christian is one of the youngest second officers at sea and is already preparing to take his first officer's examination at the end of this contract. His father is a captain and introduced him to the sea. So I just used to spend all my summer and Christmas holidays on the ship. So I was, the first time I went I was around, I don't remember now, five, six years old. So now I'm 26. So it's actually 20 years already that I've been on the ships and uh, I'm really in love with this job. There's always hot competition amongst the officers to work with Captain Russo. He is famous for his technical skills and cool approach. I really respect the captain a lot. And everywhere in the world is known as the best maneuver because he's really maneuvering the ship half time than all the other companies. Living up to his reputation once again, Captain Russo swings the ship into perfect position. The cruisers must now be disembarked, and the team must quickly prep the 14 guest decks for the new passengers who are already waiting to board. Due to the late arrival, 
The crew have less time than usual to service the Italian ship's 128,000 square meters. Along with the 1,200 German guests, there are several celebrities embarking today. Housekeeping is under pressure to get the suites in shape. Lunch is already being prepared. The crew knows that their German guests will want to prompt food service once they board. As soon as that buffet opens, you are in Germantown. The chef's supplies for the upcoming week are being loaded. The infantry team now has less time in port to complete the loading. And today, it's more complicated than usual. It's officially the beginning of the winter season, and all the menus have changed. New ingredients, new suppliers, and several special requests, like fresh baby quail, mean the inventory team must be on the ball. Check the truck. Christian has a few hours off and has decided to go ashore with Cheryl, his fiance, who works on the Serena as one of the dancers. They don't often get to go ashore together and so take every opportunity they can. Attilio, the hotel director, doesn't have a moment of downtime today. He has some celebrities boarding soon and needs to check that their special requests have arrived. The inventory team have been briefed to bring the special deliveries straight to Attilio, who will personally ensure the secret supplies are delivered to the luxury suites. Edward wants to check the quality of some of the new deliveries so, Mr. Edward, personally. We can proceed, uh, with embarkation of the fruit. More beer than usual okay. has been ordered for this cruise. You better make sure that you don't run out of beer when you have the, our German guests on board, you know? Federica, the cruise director, and her entertainment team have had to rework all the schedules to suit the German guests. Their approach has had to change completely. We have to lower the volume of the music, you know, all over the ship, from the musicians to the shows in the theatre, because they are very much annoyed by the loud volumes. Federica has improvised. Just in case the regular stage shows aren't popular with the new cruisers, she has arranged for a well-known ventriloquist, René Luden, to perform on this cruise. René has worked on the ship several times before, and the crew can usually count on him to entertain guests in up to 13 languages. To please quieter cruisers, Bebi de Michele, head of adult entertainment, was told he needs to tone down his way of relating to guests. And now arguments are erupting over everything. He is well known for his exuberance, but the heads of department are worried he may offend some German passengers. He's, got very, he's very, very lively. If you look at him, you, you, you think he's, uh, he's rude. You have to slow him down a little bit. The situation has caused tension. Hotel director Attilio knows this week will be a careful balancing act. Towards the end of the cruise, a famous rock band will board the ship for the Serena's first rock concert at sea. As famous in Italy as the Beatles in England, Nomadi will be boarding for a one-night spectacular in the Jove Theatre. It won't be easy keeping wild fans and conservative Germans happy at the same time. Attilio has called a meeting with all the heads of department to go over the week's plan and has told the printers to include a notice about the upcoming rock show in the Today programmes. 3,800 of these entertainment schedules are printed daily and are delivered to each cabin. Preparing guests for the week ahead will hopefully limit any frustration over loud volumes. Down in the bowels of the ship, the stage is set for some engine action. The chief engineer, Francesco Iorio, and his engineering team are preparing to open up one of the engines and perform some routine maintenance. The diodes that help drive one of the giant motors must be replaced, and it's a massive task. It involves the engineers climbing inside the motor casing. During this time, access to the area is strictly prohibited. If just one button is pressed in error, the technicians could be minced. All tools are laid out carefully. Nothing can be dropped inside the casing, and what goes in must come out. The engineers must work quickly, they must be finished in time for the ship to leave Venice. The loading is almost complete and guests have begun to board. Thank you, 
The Samsara Spa is bracing itself for the invasion. The spa is one of the most famous features of the ship. One of the largest spas at sea, it covers more than 2,000 square meters, and it's always a hit with celebrity cruisers and German guests alike. Some guests have only just embarked and have already made their way to the Samsara. Renee Hunter, the female lead singer in the stage shows on board, is one of the few staff members who is occasionally allowed to use the spa facilities. She's taking this opportunity to relax, as she knows this week will be a crazy one. She has a new male singer joining her on board today, and one of the dancers, Melissa, has disembarked for personal reasons. Melissa! You picked up every number in the show. Melissa's replacement, Danielle, has already begun rehearsals with the other dancers. It's very strange for all of us to have a different, you know, member of the team. But I feel so sorry for her because she's, she's really getting thrown in at the deep end. I mean, when we first arrived, we were all in the same boat, all new to it, and it was all woo, a shock to the system. But for her, it's, she's just on her own. Down in the engine room, the technical team have completed the replacement of the diodes in good time, but the job is far from over. One of the most important phases of the process is checking that nothing has been left inside the motor. Every single part must be accounted for. Just one tiny screw left inside the casing could bring the massive ship to a standstill. Guests are now on board, and it's time for the Costa Serena to leave Venice. The mist has finally lifted, allowing guests a clear and unique view of the city. The Serena will return in seven days. The cruise has begun. <laughs>